This is the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome Podcast. I am your host, Laurie Henderson. Join me on this journey into the world of manga, where a river of reviews flow through caverns of commentary down into the latest news. Welcome to the Manga Dome. Bookscan, top manga for May 2013. With May coming on, it's time to look at the best of print manga through retail and online sales as Bookscan sees it. Of their top 20 graphic novels for May, nine of them were manga. Yes, I am counting the Yen Press young adult adaptations as manga. May starts with a manga at the top, Naruto Volume 61 at number 1. Should this be a surprise? Volume 60, which debuted in February at number 1 as well, and showed a steady decline, still remains in the top 20, falling to number 17 this month. And because the kids just can't get enough of the orange-suited ninja, Naruto 3-in-1 Volume 5, which covers volumes 13-15, through 15, also hits the list at number 18. That's three Narutos in one month. Viz should be pleased. The only other holdover from the last two months is Sailor Moon. Last month's Darling, Volume 10, drops six spots to number 10, while Volume 11 debuts at Volume 10's previous spot of number 4. Jumping in at number 5 is the hardcover first volume of New Moon, the second book of the Twilight Saga. Love it or hate it, you can't deny its power at attracting dollars. Jumping in at number 9 is another shoujo the girls can't get enough of, Blackbird Volume 16. Just a few spots behind it is Black Butler Volume 13 at number 12, and at number 14 is Dance in the Vampire Boond Volume 14, the final volume in the series. This still dominates holding four of the nine spots, but three of them are all Naruto. Overall, I don't think this bodes well. What are they going to do when Naruto ends? Kodansha Comics and Yen Press have two titles each, but again, Kodansha has two volumes of the same series. They're going to have the same problem as Viz. It's good to see Seven Seas make the list. Their eclectic library of titles does have its fans, and it's good to see them buying. Shonen titles only outnumber shoujo by one, but Black Butler is a shonen in name only, as girls buy it for the hot guys, so I'd say it's really a tie this month. The VizManga.com Top 10 Finally, the shonen to shoujo ratio is broken. For the week of June 4th, 2013, the number one title is, once again, Naruto Volume 61. Digital or print, Naruto is king of the hill. Coming in at number two is Itsu Waribito Volume 6, which was released last week. Kare First Love Volume 1 returns at number three, having fallen off the list last week. The next volume, From Far Away Volume 9, comes in at number four, down two from Volume 8's high at number two last week. Shaman King returns with Volume 28 coming in at number 5, the same spot as Volume 27 did two weeks ago. New shoujo series to the site, Tale of the Moon Volume 1, debuts at number 6, while the new volume of Case Closed Volume 7 comes in at number 7, up 1 from Volume 6's number 8 last week. Red River Volume 8 hangs on to the list, even though it falls 5 to number 8. Nisei Koi Volume 3 also continues to hang on, though it falls three to number nine, and rounding out the list is another newcomer, Alice Nineteenth, Volume One, coming in at number ten. The ratio is better this week, as Shoujo and Shonen are tied at five volumes each. The titles that have really shown staying power are Naruto, From Far Away, Red River, Case Closed, and Nisekoi, as they stay on the list with only volume numbers, if anything, changing. I'll also be interested to see if there are any more boomerang titles like Shaman King and Kare First Love. A new feature to the site is called Manga Mondays. Every Monday, three titles are featured with their first two volumes on sale for 20% off for the week. This is a good way to introduce new readers to older series or long-running series. This week features Claymore, Flame of Rekka, and Siren, the latter two having been on the top ten previously. Coming up next week is the debut of a new shonen title, Law of Ueki. Viz first published this title in 2006. It is about Ueki, a teenage boy given the power to change garbage into trees. He must use his power to compete in a tournament to help decide who will become the new god of heaven. Check it out if you think it sounds interesting. Manga Reborn Beta 2 Manga Reborn is a new legal manga streaming site. 
and it's been in beta for the last few months and this week moved into its beta 2 phase. The site is kind of a combination of J-Manga and Manga Novel. Remember Manga Novel? Or Digital Manga Guild. Site owner Beyond Perspective Solutions works both directly with artists and with publishers to make titles available, like Manga Novel did, and then fans are invited to upload their own translations, like Manga Novel and Digital Manga Guild. The site uses points instead of straight currency for the purchase of titles, and they are not available for download like JManga. The software Manga Reborn uses is similar to those used on aggregate sites, so there isn't any DRM to speak of, which is nice since it makes it accessible to any computer or device. There aren't any big names on the site, though there are some familiar ones such as the title, Give My Regards to Blackjack, and creator Moyoko Ano. Most of the titles are in Japanese only at the moment, though there is a fair selection of titles in English. Most of the titles appear to be older, 70s to 80s for the most part. I checked out one of the free titles, of which there are several in English, The 311 Disaster, my first experience as a stranded commuter. It was a short story, only 15 pages long. The translation was well done and the story amusing. I do see a lot of potential in Manga Reborn. The problem is going to be getting translators, getting titles that people would be interested in, and most of all, getting the word out. That has been the biggest problem for manga publishers. It was part of J-Manga's problem, and it could be a problem for Manga Reborn. From the bottom of the pile. I read a lot of manga, and while I love sharing all the good reads I find, I do run into some clunkers, too. I talked very briefly about Until Death Do Us Part, Volume 2, in my inaugural podcast. It's written by Hiroshi Takashige and illustrated by Double S. It's published by Yen Press and is rated for older teens. It is in action and retails at eighteen ninety nine U.S., it is an omnibus collecting the original volumes 3 and 4. In the second volume, the African country of Galboa is revealed to be the force behind the terrorist acts, and through some intel from Exolid, have discovered Haruka's ability. The leader, Edge Tourist, decides he wants her as well. Mamoru does his stuff, stopping Exolid in their cloning operation, as well as Tourist, cutting off his arm in the process, which makes him none too happy. He puts a contract out on Mamoru. In the meantime, Mamoru officially becomes Haruka's bodyguard, and Sierra, the female agent that's been helping them, decides to stay with them and Igawa, so Haruka has a female influence. Haruka gets a fake ID and gets to go to school, but a new enemy shows up, an invisible one that Mamoru must try and figure out how to defeat. I wasn't impressed with the first volume, though I did like the global frequency vibe that it initially had. This volume has none of that. It has a lot of Mamoru being awesome with his sword and Haruka fretting over him. I'm okay with the Mamoru being awesome part, but really, for the most part, I don't care about any of these characters or what happens to them. I'm okay with the explanation of Haruka's powers, but I don't care for her that much, and as a female protagonist, that's killer. I also don't care for the upskirt shots that get thrown in, mostly with Sierra. I'll still read the third volume, but more for, can this get better? Then, I like it. It's run for 19 volumes in Japan so far and is still ongoing, so it's got to have something going for it. Maybe someday I'll find it. I give this title a 3 out of 5 stars. Ruroni Kenshin Restoration, Volume 1 It took a while, but I finally read all of the original Ruroni Kenshin last year. With a live-action movie having been released last year, a reimagining of the manga was created by its original creator, Nobuhiro Watsuki. It's published by Viz Media and rated for teens. It's a historical fantasy and retails for $9.99 US. Ruroni Kenshin Restoration uses the same characters, but the story gets turned around a bit. Himura Kenshin is still a Ruroni who stumbles upon a man masquerading as the Hitoriki Batosai, but this time it is during a tournament run by the merchant Takeda Kanryu. He is buying out the rights of dojos and using the leaders of them in the tournaments with the promise that they can buy their land rights back. Keoru Kamiya is, of course, one of the participants. Yasuhiro works for Takeda and is used as a reverse hostage to keep Keoru in line. Kenshin gets involved, of course, and defeats Takeda, who then hires 18 assassins to kill Kenshin. In this volume, Sanosuke and Saito are introduced, with their stories greatly compressed. It also includes a chapter zero, which tells a tale of Kenshin before he arrives in Tokyo. This volume is rather lean for a Shonen Jump title, coming in at 142 pages. 
I read all of these chapters in Weekly Shonen Jump Alpha, where they ran monthly. I didn't really care for this reimagining then, and I still don't care for it now. I don't have anything against reimagining titles in general. I like to check out remakes and can enjoy them and their originals separately. This new Rurouni Kenshin rubbed me the wrong way, though. Everyone seems angrier this time around. The art is also much sharper and more spartan. I didn't enjoy reading it or looking at it. This is definitely not the Meiji Swordsman romance, and it's much more of a harder action title. I'm sure this will please a lot of the Shonen Jump crowd, but as I've grown tired of all but the best of Shonen, it doesn't please me. If you think Kenshin would have been better with more of an edge and less of the character development, then this is the title for you. I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix Volumes 1 and 2 Kingdom Hearts has been in the news a lot recently, especially since Sony announced a new game coming out for the PS4. This series seems to have quite a following as it mashes up Disney characters with Final Fantasy characters, two popular properties. This series was originally published by Tokyo Pop back in the day. Yen Press has rescued it and published it in two omnibus volumes. It is by Shiro Amano and is rated all ages. It is an adaptation based on a video game and each volume retails for $12 US. I had bought the original release of this series for my daughter back when Tokyo Pop released it, but I never read it. With this new release, I decided to finally see what all the hoopla was about. Sora and his two friends, Riku and Kairi, live alone on a tropical island. One night, a storm wipes out the island and separates the three. Meanwhile, in Disney Castle, King Mickey has disappeared and tasks his two right-hand men, Court Wizard Donald and Captain Goofy, with finding the one who holds the key, Sora. Once together, the trio travel to the different realms, i.e. Disney movies, to stop the Disney villains and the Heartless from destroying everything. If you're a Disney fan and or Final Fantasy fan, you will love the series. Unfortunately for me, I'm neither. I've never cared overly for Disney characters, especially Donald and Goofy. I've never been interested in Final Fantasy, so this series starts out with two strikes already. Each adventure in the realm is basically a retelling of that film's story made to fit the Kingdom Hearts overall plot, and all of the major films are hit. Alice in Wonderland, Aladdin, Hercules, The Little Mermaid, Pinocchio, Peter Pan, Beauty and the Beast, and even Winnie the Pooh. The Final Fantasy characters, Yuffie and Leon, only appear in Traverse Town and are more support to Sora. The video game elements are also very obvious, as when a keyhole is locked, a level completed, Sora is rewarded with a piece of a report that gives them more information on the Heartless. They are also given new weapons and powers as they level up. I found these elements more annoying than cute. Since I'm not a fan of either franchise, you can take this review with a grain of salt. For an all-ages title, I do think it is a good one. Fans of Disney will really enjoy the romps through the different Disney realms and seeing familiar characters and situations with a new twist. Me, I just couldn't see the appeal. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, with the .5 for Yen Press rescuing an all-ages title to add to the relatively small library of such titles. Thank you for listening to the Manga Xanadu Manga Dome podcast. You can find links to the stories and books discussed here in the show notes at manga.jdragononline.com. You can email me with any questions at xanadu at jdragononline.com or leave a comment on this post. Rate me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at manga xanadu, all one word. Until next time, farewell from the Manga Dome.